We have looked at what makes a significant digit, how measurements work, what is included in a measurement, and how to determine sig figs through a calculation. Now we're going to apply all of these rules to different types of calculations you may perform. Looking at temperature first, there are three units of temperature that you could work with or see. Two of them we can measure directly within lab. The two we can measure within lab are Celsius and Fahrenheit. But we all know we don't actually use Fahrenheit because that is not the metric unit. So when we are in lab, we are going to measure in Celsius. Kelvin, we have to convert to. We do not have a device in our lab to measure Kelvin. Therefore, it takes a conversion based off Celsius. How do these three relate to each other? Well, Kelvin is on the absolute scale. So the absolute scale means when you have zero Kelvin, it's zero, zero. There's no negative number. It is, the, it is zero. There is no temperature, it, it, we're done. There's no kinetic energy, anything along those lines. So that works on an absolute scale, zero to only positive numbers. Celsius versus Fahrenheit, um, just looking at the, their two different measuring scales. If we look at the absolute zero, when Kelvin is at zero, where are these two scales at? Fahrenheit, negative 459 is the coldest temperature, theoretically, we could reach in Fahrenheit, negative 273 in Celsius. And then you can increase from there. Next, we look at those phase changes. So freezing water, Fahrenheit, that occurs at 32 degrees Celsius, Celsius, zero. And then Kelvin at 273.15. And then boiling, 212 Fahrenheit, 100 degrees for Celsius, 373.15 for um, Kelvin. Now, if you look on the scale on the left, you can see where what we're going to get to in just a little bit, um, where our conversion factors are. Kelvin and Celsius change by the same increment. They're just off by 273. But one change in Celsius is one change in Kelvin. That is not true for Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit has a 9 to 5 ratio, which means it has a difference of 9 fifths or 1.8. So as we increase um, Fahrenheit by, or Celsius by one, Fahrenheit is being increased by 1.8. So it's not a clean transition like our two metric units are. But those are the three different um, temperatures that we can work with. Looking at Kelvin first, the only time we really use Kelvin is when we are working with our gas laws. That's going to be at the end of the semester. It can theoretically be used whenever we use degrees Celsius, but because we don't have an instrument to measure it, we typically stick with degrees Celsius unless absolutely necessary. When we are looking at our sig figs, um, only one measured value is going to be in that conversion. All right, so Kelvin, that 273.15, my bad, this is considered an exact number. It, based off the scientific community, it is set that is the number for Kelvin. Therefore, we only have one measured number, which means that our sig figs are gonna come based off that Celsius. We're gonna follow the same rules that come with multiple or addition, subtraction. I have so many typos in this slide, I apologize. So that means we're gonna to go to the same decimal place as our recorded temperature. So if degrees Celsius has a decimal place, our answer for Kelvin will have a decimal place. We are going to ignore the decimals within the Kelvin value. So if we have 37 degrees Celsius, what is it in Kelvin? So we'll take 37, I'm going to put a decimal there just so I know it's present, plus 273.15. When we add those together, so 
So we get 310.15 addition subtraction rules. Ignore the decimal places because we only have one's place occupied and the one does not affect that zero. So we have 310. Going between Celsius and Fahrenheit. I'm going to show you both, but my suggestion is memorize one of them because you can always rearrange the equation to find the other. For sig figs for Celsius, again, only one measured value is in this conversion, and this is going to be the degrees Fahrenheit. The 32 and the 1.8, which is also that 9 fifths that we had talked about before, those are exact values. They are exact conversion factors. We do not need to take those into account. Um, we will follow the addition subtraction rules of decimal place for temperature just to make our processes easier going back and forth. And so it's consistent across the line. If we have a Fahrenheit, so our body temperature is 98.6. What is that in degrees Celsius? So I take 98.6 minus 32, divide that by 1.8. I'm going to get 37.0 degrees Celsius. We want that decimal place because one, it gives us the three sig figs that was being shown up here, but it also tells us the precision of the thermometer we used. That that thermometer measured to the tenths place, therefore we want to record our answer in the tenths place. So now going to Fahrenheit, same sig fig rules. We're going to go to the one, sorry, the measured value for the temperature in which we have recorded. Now, I want to show you how to rearrange one of these equations. So let's say I remember Celsius because that's the one we typically go to first. So Celsius is degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 over 1.8. I can rearrange this equation to solve for Fahrenheit. Multiply by 1.8, and I have that Fahrenheit minus 32, and so then I want to take that plus 32 equals Fahrenheit. So we can go back and forth. You do not need to memorize each equation separately, no one of them, and you can go back to the other. So let's say uh, we measured our degrees Celsius as 14.6. What is that in Fahrenheit? So I'm going to take 1.8 times 14.6 plus 32. We're going to get 58.28 in our calculator. However, the precision of our thom thermometer is to the tenths place. Therefore, the precision of our answer needs to be to the tenths place. The 8 does cause the 2 to round up, therefore our final answer is 58.3 degrees Fahrenheit.